Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson. We are continuing our extended Roundtable Tech Talk series with our friends from Halo ITSM. And today I have with me Tom Petley from Halo ITSM. Hey, Tom, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Mike. Great to be here. It's so exciting as we continue to dive deeper and deeper into the world of Halo ITSM and all of the features and capabilities that Halo has. Uh, and today we're going to focus on uh, the CMDB and, we're, uh, and the CIs that make up the CMDB and how Halo has structured the CMDB within the Halo ITSM platform. So, Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, as you know, and we've talked about this, I'm a huge CMDB guy. Um, I've seen how trans, uh, transformational a quality CMDB can be for organizations. We have a couple of our customers that we've done webinars with that talk about how CMDB is the center of their universe and everything drives from the CMDB, having a solid CMDB, maintaining a solid CMDB helps them really understand what's going on within their organization and you know, do effective changes and um, have effective incident and service request management and problem management, um, leveraging the CMDB uh, and having a CMDB capability um, can be so transformational to an organization to mm -hmm. start to really mature and be high performing. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to you, take it away. Let's take a look at Halo's, uh, Halo ITSM's um, CMDB, you guys have done some pretty exciting stuff with it. Fantastic. Let me just share my screen, Mike. So today's tech talk, we're going to talk about yeah, CMDB. Um, and I just wanted to focus on the actual configuration items themselves to start with. So under here, we've got our CI types. And these are just our each type, and they are configurable. You can include exactly which ones you want. Um, out of the box, we've got the kind of standard ones, but to add new ones, you can simply right click and create a new CI type. Um, the CI types in Halo are almost like templates of the different um, CIs, so it controls which fields appear against each CI, um, and you don't always want the same fields against each one. You can also control other processes as well behind the scenes. I'm going to focus on this one just firstly on an Azure server, and I'll just go into here. So as part of the um, CI itself, um, you see we have lots of uh, fields that we can control the visibility of. So on the details tab here, you see we've got some of the key fields here, such as asset tag. Um, so that's our kind of unique identifier, um, which doesn't have to be, but it often is. Um, and that can be a, a barcode sticker that sits on, sits on a CI, or it can just simply be a, kind of a virtual number as well. And if it is a barcode, we can then scan it and um, kind of load up the details from there. Um, scrolling down, you'll see we have the, the location. If there is a location of that CI we know about, and we also have our business and technical owners as well. And these business and technical owners can pull into our approval processes. So if we are going to raise a change against a certain CI, we know automatically who the who the business owner, who the technical owners are and they can automatically pull into our approvals or we can kind of manually kind of know who they are and, and bring them into our, our approval process or even our CAD if we want to. If I just continue to scroll down here, just some of the more of the key fields we've got, it could be an SLA override against the CI. So if an incident is raised against this particular server, we may want to automatically increase that priority. As well as that, we then have the status of the CI. So this is set to active here. But if I was to go into here and edit this, I could then set this to kind of one of our other statuses. Um, so it might be that if you are decommissioning a server, it might go through some kind of temporary kind of an active phase or switched off phase before it goes to kind of fully decommissioned. So you can control that in there. Um, if I scroll down as well, this is where we're looking at our dependencies. So um, in Halo, we call them kind of ascendant and descendant. I know some other systems might call them upstream, downstream. It's exactly the same concept. Um, and then beneath that, we have our related services. So if a CI, um, if a service is related to a specific CI, we can build that link in, um, and then we can start to um, suggest updates and send alerts to users based on that. Um, and then beneath there is how many users are impacted by this CI, um, and that pulls from the services as well. Um, beneath this, we can also, 
not sure I've got a great example here, but if I, I'm just going to go back into a workstation because I know there's a few more details on there. And if I go into a workstation, I just scroll down here, kind of lower down on the list. You'll see this is where we can store kind of additional information here. So we can store the serial numbers, kind of OS versions, all those kind of nice things. When it comes to actually populating this information, um, Halo would, would typically integrate with another tool that uh, we have lots and lots of partners uh, that we utilize depending on the exact requirements uh, for the CMDB. So we've got partners such as um, Device 42 and kind of Land Sweeper and tools like that. Or if you are utilizing something like SCCM, um, you can just kind of enable an integration that will automatically populate all this information. Also, if you are moving towards Intune as well, there's a nice integration with Intune as well. Um, any changes to any of this information, whether it's picked up uh, automatically or whether it's manually changed, it might be that our discovery picks up, it's changed from four to eight um, gigabytes of memory, for example. I just save that. All this information appears in the change history over here. And you see it was myself who updated it manually, and that's it's got my name in there. If this was picked up by, let's say, device 42, um, that would show as device 42 in here is picking that up. And this, this kind of audit trail, this applies to all the information against the CI. So you've always got that full traceability. So if something changes to a server and there's no, there's no change request linked to it, we're going to know about it straight away in here. I'm going to get back to our Azure server here and just talk a little bit about the relationships and the dependency mappings. So under here, you'll see we have these relationships built in. Um, and again, this is this is upstream downstream parent child is our concept for upstream downstream. And as part of that, each relationship has a type of relationship. So this one is a this is a database instance that runs on this server. Um, it's also a member of this cluster as well. So you'll see we have different relationship types, and they all pull into our dependency diagrams here. So this is all kind of dynamic. You can click into any of these and kind of control it from here. I drag it around and you can really build up some really complex um, diagrams and dependency maps. Um, so in this case, we can see the upstream relationship being a member of that cluster and our downstream got the database instance and then the actual database is beneath that. Um, so really powerful how we can map all this in. And these mappings, again, they, you've got kind of multiple options of how you control the mappings. It could be that you use a tool like device 42 to automate, automatically populate these mappings. And then they're all in Halo, they're kind of all nicely displayed for when you do uh, kind of raise your change requests against them. But you could also populate them manually. You could build as part of your process, your change process. If there is a change to any CIs, at the end of that change, you could then have a step to update the, the actual CI itself uh, within Halo the dependency. Um, so lots of options in there. I'm just going to move through a few more of the tabs here just to kind of highlight a few more features that we have. So if you do want to link it back to supplier or vendor management, um, we can link it back at this stage. And this allows us to, if, a, if we do have a vendor that's managing the, um, the maintenance of a particular CI, we can have the link in here. And when we go to raise, say someone raise an incident against that server, for example, we could then raise it off to our, our vendor and it's automatically going to know who the vendor is and we can use kind of contracts and things like that. I'm not going to go into too much detail there, but um, I feel like we could have another video on that at some point um, about the vendor management. And then just scrolling down, there's the uh, scheduled tickets as well. So if you do want to schedule backup checks or even kind of annual certificate renewals or something like that, that can all be um, scheduled into Halo here. And the important tab here, the kind of the last one I'm just going to show on here is the is the tickets tab. Um, I've got nothing in there at the moment, <laughs> but the, the tickets tab would show any incidents, requests, problems, or changes that are linked to this CI would automatically show in here. And under here, we would have a, there's a filter to, to determine exactly the view you want in there. So you can toggle between incidents requests, for example. Um, it's a really powerful, it all links together. It's a big part of Halo, how every all these different modules they all come together. And then the CMDB is, um, is that kind of central piece that um, allows us to kind of proactively manage it and offer that great service. Um, taking it one step further, we also do um, support software licensing as well. 
Um, I'm just going to drop down to the software layer here. And we've got an example in here, supporting software licensing. So we can actually track which CIs um, consume the software licenses. And by consuming the licenses, we can then report back on how many we've got available and how which ones can be applied to different, um, different CIs as well. Um, so just another really useful um, kind of module there, which just comes out of the box with Halo. And the licensing, again, it can either be automated or manual. Um, so if you are using one of the, uh, the integrations or one of our partner tools, they can um, automatically update these license accounts. Um, or you can, again, do it manually and assign up the individual licenses. It's really up to you. Um, one final thing as well, before I kind of pass back to Mike, is the ability to tie it back in with our um, our remote control tools as well. So if you do want to take, take it a step further and build in the kind of simple one-click connection options, we can tie in with tools like Beyond Trust and Team Viewer and uh, kind of log me in and things like that um, and have simple connection options. And if you actually want to pull it into asset management as well, you can also send out kind of meeting invites to users um, and connect them to their actual devices that way as well. So there's lots and lots of kind of flexibility and um, kind of automation we can build around that. Can I pass it back to you, Mike? Do you got anything else? Any kind of questions? I think you've covered all of the highlights of what you can do with a particular uh, asset or CI. And as you see, the way that uh, Halo has structured this, as Tom said, um, if you want to call them all CIs, knock yourself out. You want to break some stuff down into assets, have other things as your CIs, other things as your software. It's the flexibility of the platform to organize this. It's all, it's all the CMDV, but to organize this in a way that is relevant to you as an organization. And then to tie it into uh, uh, third-party tools that are doing a discovery or a dependency mapping uh, sort of function. Um, it, it brings together all of the best practices around the CMDV to really be able to manage uh, your CIs, manage your assets, uh, manage their details, and even go so far as to manage some software licensing um, as part of the overall structure. Um, and then tie any of these things back to their relevant uh, work processes. So incidents and requests and changes and problems, et cetera. Uh, it's one of the, the, the great things, as I said, you know, a lot of our customers kind of leverage uh, the CMDB is kind of the center of the universe um, because as you're doing a change, as an example, and you, you look at the ability to create your relationships between CIs to really understand, do we have changes that are going on that potentially are in conflict? Um, it's a, a great way to avoid um, creating a problem for yourself because you have multiple things going on at once. So, Tom, I really appreciate you joining us in sharing kind of the highlights of the CMDB. Um, and as you said, we'll do a, a future episode where we'll dive a little bit deeper um, and talk about some, some specific nuances of things that we can do with, within Halo ITSM and specifically within the CMDB. So we appreciate you all joining us today, Tom. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for joining us and sharing uh, Halo ITSM and the CMDB with us. And we look forward to having you join us for another episode of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk Deep Dives on Halo ITSM.